What's up everyone? 2022 is almost to a close and it's that time of year to reflect. And many different services are doing year-end summaries of what you did in that service. So I thought, why don't we do the same thing for the Power Platform? I'm gonna show you two different ways that you can get information about the different apps and flows and things that you've created and did inside of the Power Platform for the previous year. So you can send out a nice year-end summary to your users. I'll provide a link to download the two different ways of doing this. And of course, I'm gonna break down how it's done right after this. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, there are actually two different ways that we could go about doing this year-end summary of what your makers did in their Power Platform environment for the year. Arguably the best way is if you have the Power Platform Center of Excellence Toolkit installed inside of your Power Platform environment. So the Center of Excellence Toolkit is an add-on to the Power Platform that you can install. It uses the Power Platform's own tools like Power Automate, Power Apps to be able to govern and manage your Power Platform environment. Now, one of the things that this gives us is it does some backend processes and flows to do an inventory of all the different apps and flows and bots and things like that that you have in your environment. And it can do things like sum up how many apps and flows were created per user and store all that information inside of Dataverse table so that it's readily available. So one of the ways that I'll show you here relies on you having this Center of Excellence Toolkit installed and it uses some of the Dataverse tables and information that it already gives us. Now that way probably allows us to have the ideal experience and most information available to us. But what if you don't have the Center of Excellence Toolkit installed? I'll show you another approach that you can take to get some of that information out, albeit it's a little bit more complex to get the information, but it is available. So let's start with scenario one, assuming you don't have the Center of Excellence Toolkit installed. So how we're gonna do this is we're gonna rely on Power Automate to get a lot of this information for us. So you'll see I already have this Power Apps wrapped email flow created. Now how people will start this process is via a Power App where they can log in and request that they get their year-end Power Platform summary, what I'm calling Power Platform Wrapped. So to kick off a new flow, we'll go to New Flow and we'll create an instant cloud flow. And for the trigger, we'll select Power Apps. The Power App piece is very simple and we'll go back to that at the end here. So once we have that, there are several different steps that we have to do. Now I'm not going to go line by line over each one of these steps because there's a lot going on and I have uploaded this solution to GitHub already. So it's in my Power Apps repository in the Power Platform wrapped folder. Now I have two folders in here, one for the COE version and one for the no COE version. Now this no COE version is a zip file, which is a Power Platform solution that contains this flow that I'm gonna be walking you through and the Power App that you simply upload the solution and you're ready to go. So mainly what we're gonna do here on the trigger from Power Apps is we're going to pass in the email of the person that we wanna get this information for. Then we're going to get their profile information using the Office 365 users get profile action. Then we're going to initialize a ton of variables to store some key information. Now, obviously here, I'm not doing everything that we could get information about for the Power Platform and what they did, just a few key pieces of information that we might want to surface up. So I'm gonna get all the apps that they've created. I'm gonna get connectors they've used. And then we're gonna do some totaling of the various apps that they've created, connections and things like that. Now, the key part here to know is how we're getting this data. So if we go click on the plus button here and go to add an action, and search for admin, you'll see that we actually have some admin connectors for the Power Platform. So we have Power Platform for admins, but we also have Power Apps for admins and Power Automate for admins. So I'm using these connectors here to get data about the apps that we have in a given environment. For this solution though, we wanted to be able to look across all environments that the user requesting this has access to. So what we'll do is we'll select this Power Platform for Admins connector, and we'll select this action for List Environments as Admin. This will allow us to get all of the different environments, and then we can loop through those and then get the corresponding apps and flows and other Power Platform assets in each environment. Now, a thing to know about this approach as well is this is kind of a tedious, a long running process. It has to go through all of your environments. So if you have a really big Power Platform rollout here and you have lots of environments and apps and flows, this could take a little bit to run. So just FYI. But once we have all these environments now, now we can loop through them. 
So we're gonna go add an action and we'll put in an apply to each control. So inside this apply to each, you're going to loop through the value object from our list environments action. And now we're gonna add in that other admin connector. So this is the power apps admin connector here. And we see we have a ton of different actions that we can do with this. And one of those is to get apps, plural, as admin. So this will get all the apps in a given environment. So once we have the apps, we wanna loop through the apps in that environment. So we're gonna have some nested loops here to get details about the application. Now I need to get a count of the total amount of apps. So what I'm doing inside of Power Automate is above, I initialized a variable called var app count. So what I'm doing here is I'm incrementing that variable. So every time we go through the loop and find an app, we just add one to that so we can get that total. I also have another variable above where I'm storing data about the apps. So in the var apps array, I want to append an object and I'm going to extract some key information that I want to store in that variable. So like the app name, environment name, the form factor, who created it, the app type and things like that. I'm also just doing a little extra step here to be able to get the connections or the data sources used inside of the application in case I want to report off of that information. Information about what the connection is, who created it and when it was created. Now, so far, this is giving me everything, regardless of if the user is myself or even the year. So what I want to have happen is only return the apps for the user that's requesting it for the current previous year. So 2022 in this case. So what I need to do now is you'll see that I'm using a filter compose action here, and I'm going to point it to that apps array that we initialized earlier. And I'm going to do a filter here. So I'm going to only return items using this format date time where the created time year equals 2022. Now, and the reason why I'm not doing the year filter and the user filter in the same condition here is just in case I want to report off of this additional information. So theoretically, instead of sending an individual summary to a particular user, maybe I want to send out a summary to the entire company, letting them know that as a company in 2022, we created X amount of applications. So by doing the filter here, I have that information available to report off of that total app count per company rather than just per user. So then I'll add in a second filter here to filter this filtered apps for 2022 for applications created by the user that's requesting. And now below in this compose, this is where I'm getting that count of the applications that I actually created. And for that, we're just using the length function. And then below, we're just doing some more calculation here. So same thing for the connections when I was getting the different connections used in applications. We wanna do those same filterings for the current year and then for the current user. And just some additional pieces of information that I'm getting for reporting purposes in this summary is the form factor used. And then one more bonus thing that I'm doing here is to be able to tell if the application uses components. So that's some data that we can get from that Power Apps or Admins Get Apps action. So it'll tell us there's a little flag there if the application uses components. So it's really all the data that we're getting. I focus this on Power Apps. You'll notice that there was a Power Automates for Admins connector as well, so we could apply apply this same concept, the same logic to get a summary for what you did in Power Automate for the year as well. But the final step here is how I'm tying this all together is this will send out an email summary to the user. So this is the final action here is to send an email with the Outlook connector. And you'll notice that I'm using a lot of HTML. So I'm trying to format the email, have some styles here and things like that to format it. And I'm simply passing in some data from our previous outputs. Now the last piece is we need that app, that Power App, to be able to kick off this process. Now the app itself that I built is very simple. So if we go here, this is the Power Apps wrapped application. It's a Canvas app optimized for the phone. And it's a simple two screen application. So I just have some information here. You can simply click a button and that was what we want to have initiate that flow to start the process to send that email with their summary for the year. So what we've did is we've used the built-in integration with Power Automate. So on the left-hand side in the toolbar here in the tree view, you'll see a Power Automate button. And here you should be able to add a flow. Now I've already did this, but this will show any flow where the trigger is Power Apps. So I could simply click on my Power Apps wrapped flow and that will add that into my application. So now on my button, I can go to the buttons on select, type in the name of my flow, which is powerappswrappedemail.run 
And then all we're doing is passing in the user.email, which gets the current logged in users of the app email and passes that into our flow. So how this all ties together from an end user experience is a user can open this on their desktop, tablet, or phone, select the get wrapped button that kicks off our flow process. So if we were to go to power automate and click on our flow, we'll see that it's currently running there. And again, this could take a good, you know, 15 minutes or so to run because it's doing a lot of stuff in the background and depending on how big your environment is and things like that it might take even longer. So be patient with it. But the output is this nice email. So it says ready for your power apps wrapped, relive your power apps maker experience. They can scroll down. Here is that total of applications that I built. There it's listing the top connectors, the top most commonly used connectors and even doing a little quasi personality test. So kind of reading into uh, if I built a lot of power apps, maybe like say more than 10 or whatever you want to define, it can give you this power addict badge. Uh, letting you know how many phone and how many tablet apps you created. And then if you use components, you get this nice time saver thing to pop up, letting you know that you've embraced components and how many of your applications you use components in. And that's basically it. So this is one way to do it if you don't have the Center of Excellence Toolkit installed. But if you do have the Center of Excellence Toolkit installed, as I said, this can be even better. So what we have here is another experience built completely inside of Power Apps pointing to the Center of Excellence Toolkit data. So I'm not clicking on anything right now. The app is running. It's automatically navigating me between these screens, giving me my Power Platform wrap. So this isn't specific to Power Apps. This is giving me information across the Power Platform, Power Automate pages, PVA, and all that. So I can see what applications I used. Here's my total number of Power Apps that I built inside of here. And then it's going to give me some additional details about Power Apps specifically. So I can see different stats, like how many Canvas apps, model-driven applications, component libraries, SharePoint apps, and custom pages I built. And then it'll move on and give me some information about Power Automate. So it lets me know that I kept things flowing. And it's going to share how many flows that I built inside of Power Automate for the year. So 140, not bad, quite a, quite a bit of flows. And this is one of my favorite parts. This is that personality test. So it does a little bit of information gathering to see, did you build more apps versus flows, things like that. And it gives you this like power addict or some kind of like personality profile. So you see I'm an EAV, Exploration Automate Variety. And then we get this overall summary. So at the very end, this is something that you could take a screenshot of, share. So for 2022, you see this nice one pager summary of the apps created, flows created, power pages, PVA bots, solutions that you created, and custom connectors that you created all in this one screen. So just a nice, cool experience to give to your users so they can log in and see what did I do in the Power Platform for the year and really celebrate their success. So how this was built, as I said, this relies on the center of excellence. So to deploy this solution, again, this is on my GitHub. So this is in that COE version repository there that you wanna download. And this is just a power app. So to install it, you go to the apps tab and import Canvas app. Now you need to install it in the environment that you have the center of excellence toolkit installed because it's reading from the tables and dataverse that the center of excellence toolkit gives us. So if we go to all here, we can see there's quite a few different tables, like for example, this power apps app table, and that's where this application is reading from. So it's getting some information here from the power apps apps table flows, PVA bots, power pages, sites, power platform solutions, desktop flows, and power apps connectors. So you want to make sure that it's deployed in the environment that you have the toolkit installed and that people have access to read information from these tables. Now the rest of the application, we see we have several different screens here. So all of the magic really is happening mostly on this on start of the app. So this is where we're going to filter some of this data down. So those tables inside of the center of excellence toolkit gives us all of the apps created. So obviously we only want to return the solutions and the assets that are created for the current year, so 2022, and for the current logged in user. So you'll notice I'm using some local collections. So I'm going to first get a collection of my applications. So we're going to filter the Power Apps app table that the COE toolkit gives us. And we're actually going to add a column. So we only want to return results for the current year, but we need to be able to extract the current year to get that data. So we're going to use the year function to extract the year from the app created on column and store that in this collection. 
And then we will filter this by the app owner equals the current logged in user. And we're just going to repeat this for all of the different tables so we can get a holistic picture of different things created across the Power Platform for the current user. So you see we have another collection we're doing for the flows created, for the PVA bots, Power Pages, desktop flows, solutions, and custom connectors. Now once we have all that data stored in collections, then we can start getting the counts. So you see I have another group of functions here using the set formula to do global variables. And I'm just simply going to do totals on all those collections. I can even do additional filters to get additional counts. So you'll see that not only am I getting a count of total apps, but I'm going to do a filter to see how many Canvas apps versus model-driven apps I've created, for example. And then here at the end, I have some different variables for that personality type page. So I kind of broke it out into three categories. So we have automates versus build. So whether you use Power Automate more than say, building things like bots or applications and Power Apps. We have F versus E, which is familiarity versus expiration. So did you kind of tend to stick to the out of the box functionality or did you explore some of the additional capabilities like Dataverse and custom connectors and things like that. And then we have L versus V, which is loyalty versus variety. So do you tend to stay in the lane of say Power Apps or Power Automates, or do you like the variety of exploring all of the pieces of the Power Platform? So those will kind of give you a score for each of these. So the Automate versus Build score was pretty easy, just if your app count is higher than your flow count. Personality type for that one will be Build, otherwise it'll be Automate. Now for the familiarity versus expiration, this one I decided to trigger off of the premium flag. So there's a flag in the Center of Excellence Toolkit that denotes for a particular app or solution if you use premium features. So that's kind of telling me, did you explore stuff beyond the out of the box? So if there was that premium marker in more than a third of your total app count, then you're gonna get that explorer tag. Otherwise you'll get the familiar tag. And then finally for loyalty versus variety, I'm just simply trying to do some rudimentary metrics here to see, are you mixing and matching more than one of the Power Platform solutions? If so, then you get the variety. And then the rest of this is just listing out the names of what this means. So this just lists all the different personality type combinations you could get, and it's assigning a name to those with the switch function and also assigning a description. And the rest of that is just building out the screens. I used a combination of some animated GIFs and then to make it auto go through the screens for you, I'm just using timer controls. So again, now this is available on GitHub, so I won't go into the ins and outs. I can make smaller videos that kind of go into a few of the tricks that I did, maybe in the app and the flow in particular that might be useful to know that you might want to use in other applications. But hopefully this is something that you can use and roll out in your organization and maybe even customize or however you want to be able to give your users something fun for the end of the year to celebrate their success with the Power Platform. And of course, I will put a link to the GitHub repo where this is located so you can download it and try it out in your environment. All right, well, that's all that I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Do me a favor, if you enjoyed this video and if you enjoyed this channel, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in 2023. If you wanna continue your Power Platform learning, check out some of my other videos here.